appreciate everybody joining today. Uh, we're actually tackling a topic that is one that I think you know generally associated with being a painful period for most uh, accounting folk, which is year end. And uh, the goal of today's session, I'm just going to share my screen here, is ultimately to provide you guys some tips and tricks to make that a little bit less painful. So if technology cooperates, you guys should be able to see my screen. And uh, today's session's not going to be um, too, too long. We will probably take up most of the hour, but um, I don't think we'll run over. Carlos is going to be actually you know, presenting a demo of some of these tips and walking everybody through kind of what we're doing today. So with that said, uh, maybe we'll get rocking here. Um, so a little bit about us. We've been around for quite a long time. We are a GP shop based out of Toronto, Canada. We've been around for quite some time. And we have developed a software as a service platform that turns uh, GP into a software as a service product. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a couple slides. And really what we try and do is make GP a seamless experience. So we do away with you know, things like expensive upgrades. We do away with a lot of the technical limitations that um, you know, can occur. Uh, and we just try and make it a really easy to budget for experience like most modern cloud ERP systems. And um, you know, just a, as a note, I, I think a couple partners have joined today. Um, we are very partner friendly. So if you're a GP partner, you know, we're certainly happy to work with you guys and you know, help uh, serve your customers on the hosting and platform side and leave the functional side to, uh, to you. And we also work with a variety of the big ESV or ESV ISV providers like E1. Uh, they have a whole bunch of really great products. You know, if you haven't checked them out, please do. Smartless Builder, Smart Connect. Um, there's just a whole bunch of really cool stuff uh, that they do. McCormick, Rockton, and a whole bunch more. So to go into a bit more detail on kind of our platform and our experience and really what we do, um, you know, it's a pretty simple to um, explain process. We take your on-premise GP platform, we move it into the Microsoft Cloud, and we provide it as a software as a service or what we call GP as a service experience. And the whole idea is to take away all the risks, all the technical limitations and challenges generally associated with hosting GP. And we also are very training based. You know, I think today's a perfect example of that. Uh, we're always doing you know, free webinars every few weeks. We have one uh, on the go. We try and tackle very specific topics. And we also have boot camps, which we're gonna talk about later. Uh, they are for a cost, but they are an entire day. They're very hands-on and they're designed to give you everything you need about a specific topic. Um, a couple last notes here just about our platform. Um, if you are on GP and you know, you'd like to upgrade, uh, you know, this is a great way of ultimately getting a free upgrade to the latest version. Uh, you can also scale your user count up or down. So if maybe you, know, you need five users during the summer and only three uh, in the fall, uh, it's very easy to scale those up and down on a month-to-month -month basis. And we have packages from $100 a month, depending on kind of what you need per user. So just before I hand it over to Carlos, for the reason that I think you've all joined today, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of what we're up to as a company and you know, ultimately what we're up to from a, a GP365 perspective. So we've committed to a release per quarter. So every quarter we're releasing some new functionality that will uh, further enhance our product. Uh, the first release, which is rolling out to our customers now, is what we're calling the core enhancements. And that's going to release uh, a lot of popular requested features, things like Azure two-factor authentication, the ability for you guys to manage your own backups and run your own backups and uh, you know, maybe you're going to do something risky in SQL, you want to click a button and run a backup. That's going to be part of that release. Uh, the ability to do domain federation to your existing domain, uh, file center, um, and one button company. So if you're looking to you know, create a test company, uh, it's now going to be very easy to do that. Training center is going to release 
sometime in Q2, probably in the middle of Q2. Uh, and what this is, is a large series of videos. And they are between one and two minutes long, and they cover a broad array of topics. They're perfect for anyone who is new to GP. Um, you know, maybe they don't know how to create a purchase order or you know, what batching is. There's a whole variety of different topics uh, that we're going to have inside of that training center. It's also really good for retraining. So maybe if you've only used you know, the AR part of GP and you'd like to learn more about you know, another part, it's a really cool way to ramp up and see what's possible and know how to do things. So that's gonna be really, really cool and uh, released pretty soon. The next one is the Expense app. So this is probably our most anticipated of all, and it's going to be released in Q3. It will allow organizations to enter expenses from their phone. So if you have a receipt, you can snap a picture of it. It integrates uh, directly uh, to GP, a few, different at, or a few different areas of GP to make the integration very tight. Uh, you can attach receipts, it has tax and tip handling. It is uh, meant to be a very simple but powerful app, um, and we're really excited for it. So that'll be released shortly. And then Time Center uh, is kind of, uh, I would say, late Q4, and that has uh, the ability to enter timesheets from your mobile device. So it integrates directly to project accounting, and uh, yeah. So that's a little look at what we're up to. And, um, you know, one of the items that we're really passionate about is taking product feedback. So if you guys are you know, wishing that GP365 had this or wishing it could do that, whether you're a current customer or whether you're looking at you know, us and you know, something's preventing you from moving over, let us know and uh, we'll be happy to have a look at adding that to a future release. So with that said, I think, uh, Carlos, this is, I think, where you're going to take over and talk about sort of why we came here today. Yeah, so uh, I guess uh, maybe roughly half of everyone, half of all organizations right now are going through a year-end process, um, or le at least uh, had their year-end process, or the year ends recently, and they're looking to, to go through the year-end process. I know there's been a bit of confusion in the past. Um, People sometimes don't don't really know how to do it at all in GP. It gets uh, certain functions confused. So this is a good time to just quickly go over it, see what steps are involved, give you a few really good t uh, tips to make sure that things go smoothly, and uh, and that should be enough to get you going, I think. So let's take a look at what we're going to be doing. So there is a standard procedure for each module, and by the way, generally I would say that close off. Uh, the gen ledger module at the very end. So first you close off accounts receivable, accounts payable, maybe other modules that you might have, and then the very last thing is close off the GL. So we'll go through that in a little bit more detail. And we're also going to be talking, as I suggested before, about some basic practices or some, some quick tips, let's say, that might not be so obvious. So just based on experience, having seen a lot of year ends, I've seen where some mistakes have been made, and I'll show you how to tackle that before you even do your year end and eventually notice. So let's let's fix the mistakes now before instead of uh, later on when you just eventually notice. And then after that, after we do the year end, there's a couple of topics as well. Um, one common question that I get, for example, is, well, I, I we closed off the year end, but I still want to post something to the prior year. Now what? So that's a bit of a discussion as well. That's generally speaking what we're going to be talking about. And in the next slide, we maybe t take a look at uh, what we're going to be talking about from a different perspective. So we're going to be doing, this is what I would normally suggest. So we do the year end for accounts receivable first, and then for accounts payable, and then for the GL. And like I was saying uh, before, afterwards we'll also say, uh, we'll also take a look at the year that we just closed and think about any considerations that we might have to do. So there we go, that's what we're gonna be talking about. So let's now get into GP and look at some of these processes. All right, so I'm gonna make you presenter, so mm -hmm. just bear with me here. You should have the power. 
great. I think a lot of people are probably looking forward to this. I, with that in mind, I know that no one can see me, but I put on my suit and tie and everything. And I bet you probably have your best Guns N' Roses t-shirt on right now. And I think we're uh, going to have a good time here. <laughs> I will guarantee you that you do not have a suit on right now. <laughs> Let's I not feel, turn on the webcam. <laughs> I feel confident in that. Okay, so uh, let's, you know, I think generally all the steps are fairly straightforward, fairly easy. It's just that there are quite a few steps involved in there. Um, and uh, so let's go through this and figure out what we have to do. Now, generally for all modules, what I'd suggest is make sure that all your transactions are posted. And what that really means, by the way, is make sure that your transactions are posted for the prior year. Some people are going to say, well, we always have a transaction somewhere and may not necessarily be ready to post. So only for the prior year. For this year, it doesn't matter whether or not you've posted them. You can keep them if you like, especially recurring transactions, things like that. But make sure that last year is posted. And so what we're going to tackle first is accounts receivable, one of the easier ones. So with AR and AP and GL, just uh, as I was saying, make sure everything's posted. After that, one step that, that uh, let's call it a, a popular step, is to do your trial balance report right? for, for all, all, your, uh, all your modules. So go to trial balance under reports, and that, that's regardless of which module you're in. And then you can print out the trial balance right away. Okay, now you can make it a historical trial balance if you like as of the last day of your fiscal year, that's fine but uh, you could also do it for what you've got right now after you post transactions. The idea being that a lot of people like to look at their trial balance before the year end and then after their year end and make sure that they're matching. Right? So that's usually the idea or sometimes they just like to have these reports um, available anyway. But anyway, so there we go. Make sure that you print off your trial balance report and uh, if you, I'm, I think that everyone knows how to do it, but you would select the option, you click on insert, and then you click on print in order to actually get your report. Right, so it's a fairly straightforward process. But after that, if you've closed, if you've posted all your transactions and you have um, printed off your trial balance report, then it's time to actually go to the, to the year end window. So under the sales page, we go to routines and we should see the year end close window. Okay, so here it is. So with, with that in mind, you can you can close both the fiscal and the calendar year. For I'd say three quarters of the organizations out there is the same thing, but uh, if it's not for you, then I would say go ahead and do both of them. Okay, and then that automatically prints off a report as well, but that's basically what you're going to get. You click on process, and that's done. Now, sometimes people ask me, what does this actually do? For AR and AP, to be honest, not a lot. It does, uh, on the inquiry side, make sure that, depending on which window you're looking at, that there's opening balances uh, for the, the new current year, right? If, if you don't go through this process, then that may not necessarily happen. So for AR and AP, it's not the most drastic thing in the world. I have actually seen organizations skip this process altogether. Um, and just go straight to the GL, but this is, in my mind, it's such a simple thing that we might as well go through the process, through the procedure. So we click on process, and that's, and then that's done. So very straightforward. Okay. And so you can see for AR, that was pretty straightforward. Let me uh, point out one little detail that uh, I almost forgot about. I have definitely met, met a lot of organizations that right around the end of the year, whether it be December 31st or a different calendar or, or a different fiscal year, they get very anxious and literally on the very last day, they go through the year and process. And that's not necessary. I think probably for those of you listening right now, you're probably aware of that considering it's uh, mid-May already. But uh, you can post or you can process the year end sometime later as of your year, uh, whatever your actual fiscal year end is. So that's not a that's not a requirement. So we've done the closing of the year. One thing that I, I personally like to do is I afterwards like to go to tools, setup, and then under financial, we have, oh, sorry, under company, 
there is a window for fiscal periods, right? So I have met a few organizations that actually confuse this process with the year-end process, and these are two distinctly different things. This window is where we control where, whether or not the period or the year is open for us to post to, right? So, and I'll discuss this a little bit more at the end of uh, this demonstration. But the idea is you want to, you probably want to close the prior year. Sorry, let me rephrase that. You want to restrict the last period or the last year so that no one can post to that period anymore, right? So if it's uh, January and then you're, you're closing off the prior year, then you want to close off December and all those other prior months. Or if it's uh, ending April or something else, then you want to go through a similar procedure over there. Okay, so uh, those two things are distinctly different. The year-end process for the most part is some GL transactions, moving things to retained earnings. I think for those of you who do accounting, you understand what I'm talking about. That's what that really means. Closing the periods so that no one can post to, that's more of, for my opinion, more of a security sort of thing. So I would probably click on close all, and then that particular year is now closed. No one can post to that period anymore. Okay, so that's what we're trying to achieve over here. And by the way, I just did it for accounts. I uh, I just closed the accounts receivable year, so maybe at this stage I want to cl I want to close the period for accounts receivable. Make sure no one's posting cash receipts or anything else to the prior year anymore. So let's take a quick look at purchasing now. So under purchasing, it's a similar story. Go through your purchasing windows and make sure that prior year transactions are posted, right? Um, and after that, go to your reports section and make sure you print off the trial balance report, okay? You might want to make it as of the last day of the prior year or maybe as of just right now. It depends on how you're going to be using that, right? So. Um, so either way, each trial balance is for right now, or if you want, you can make it historical trial balance for the last day of the prior year. Okay, so I would go in here. If I need to change the report a little bit, then I can click on modify, but otherwise, I select the report that I want to print, I click on insert, and I print, and then I've got my report. So there we go. And another common practice, not necessarily the most critical, as I'll show you later on, is that we do a backup just before you do the year end. Okay, so that, that is something that, that makes people a lot more comfortable. And I would say it was especially true maybe five years ago, but I'm about to show you a little later on a feature that was introduced not that long ago that makes closing the year end process much safer, if not absolutely foolproof. But anyway, so then, so I've posted the transactions, I have printed the report, and now again, just like with AR, I'm going to go to the year-end window, which is under routines, it's always under routines, regardless of the module. I select to close both versions of the year, so the fiscal year and the calendar year, and I click on close. So you can see it's a very straightforward window, not, um, not many options in there. I choose to print off the report, why not? And then I close the year, so that is essentially the the other step. And once I'm done with that, once I've finished closing the year, then again I go to the fiscal periods window and I make sure that the period is closed. So in other words, the prior month, the prior year, whatever, uh, that no one can post to that, that area anymore. Okay, so again, maybe for purchasing this time, I make sure that all of that is closed. It definitely makes life difficult if people are posting to prior years or prior months. Reconciling can be a bit of a nightmare if you always keep things open all the time. And so that's why if, I think this window is a little bit understated. Some organizations are very good at this. Some, some other organizations keep the fiscal year completely open. People can post to any period, any time, and they only close one year at a time. I would suggest you do it one, one month at a time or one week at a time, depending on how you've got things set up over there. Okay, 
So I, in my opinion, accounts receivable and accounts payable are fairly quick, right? Uh, the one that requires a bit more thought is the general ledger module. So let's take a look at that. So we're gonna start off the same way. We're going to take the same uh, two steps that we've done before. So we're going to go into the financial page and we're going to start off by making sure that we post all the transactions from the prior year. And again, that doesn't mean all the transactions, just the ones from the prior year. If you've got ones from this year, that's okay. You can keep them unposted, but it's definitely more useful and less confusing if you post prior year transactions right away. Okay, so I probably would go to batches. Some people like the series post window, but either way, go to the window, post what you need to, and then you're ready to continue on. So let's assume that I've posted my transactions. Now, next step, just like before, is to go to trial balance and print off the report that you need to. So uh, this varies a little bit more. You might want to print a summary or a detailed trial balance. Um, and I would make it, and, and I would, if you're creating a new option, just make sure that you are including posting accounts. Otherwise, you're going to get more or less a blank report. But print off the report before you do your year end, and you can always do it afterwards as well, just to make sure. And at, and at that stage, you should be ready to go. So people always print off the trial balance. I would even personally print off your balance sheet reports and your income statement reports for the prior year. So now that we've done that, we're going to be a little bit more detailed. Now this is where I say it's easy to make some mistakes, very innocent mistakes. And so we're going to go through a tiny bit of the setup to make sure everything's okay, and then we should be okay, and we should be good to go. So just to, uh, to take a giant step back, forget about GP for a moment. What are we actually doing here? We are taking all your balances from accounts, sorry, from for your balance sheet items, GL accounts, I mean, and your income statement, GL accounts, and we're going to do the whatever the appropriate account accounting method is, right? So for income statement, in other words, profit and loss, GL accounts, we're going to move the balances to the retained earnings account, and balance sheet items, we're going to bring the balance and we're going to move it forward to the new year. That's long story short what we're actually doing. Okay, so with that in mind, Here's one thing that I really like to focus on. I have definitely seen people make a mistake in this, and they would have made the mistake months ago and have, have not realized it all this time. But I like to go to the card section. So I'm under financial, the financial page. I like to go under cards and click on accounts. Or at least this is what I'm going to show you um, for illustrative purposes. So in here, this is, for example, a, a bank account or a cash account. This is not surprisingly set as a balance sheet item. But if I was creating a GL account over the last year, then I theoretically could have set this up incorrectly as a profit and loss account. So if I do that, then as far as GP is concerned, this is a net income or a profit and loss GL account, and it will move the balance to retain the earnings. That is, um, especially <laughs> considering the type of account this is, that is definitely a mistake. Some people would even, they're, uh, flip out and say that's like a disaster. So I wouldn't put it that strongly, but that is definitely a mistake and something you would need to correct afterwards in some way. So generally that's what we're what I'm going to do now. I'm going to confirm that all your GL accounts are properly set. So I know that some organizations have two or three uh, two or three hundred general ledger accounts. Others have a few thousand. So in other words, it may be a little cumbersome to check them all. So here's how I actually do it. I go to smart list. And by the way, if you don't know SmartList, then that's, uh, we, I'm sure we do have a few videos for that that are upcoming in our um, learning portal in GP365. And, and I would definitely look into that. It's, again, one of those understated tools that are out there. But I would open up SmartList. And under the financial folder, there is a SmartList called Accounts. Okay, so this is what it looks like more or less by default. And uh, I'm glad I have, I'm have. i using this particular company because things are a little bit um, mixed up. So things are sorted by the account number in here. 
right? But but uh, my first account, my, my first segment is not the natural or the object code. So the sorting method doesn't really help me right now. What I want to do is sort it, sort it so that all my um, assets, for example, are clumped together and all my liabilities are clumped together and so on. So that is really sorting by my middle segment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the columns button and I am going to add in, if you don't have it already anyway, a column, oh, sorry, uh, kids are starting to fly around and I told them not to, but, but anyway, I, I would add in your second segment. Right, for, uh, for me, that is called the, here it is, the account segment. Okay, you might call it the object code or the natural code or something else, but put that in as one of your columns. And once you do that and you sort by that column, then this should be easier to figure out. So I'm seeing that, let's say for me, anything that starts with a one or a two, let's pretend, is a balance sheet item, and then there's a different range for other types of accounts. So I have the posting type in here, where it says balance sheet, and or at least at the moment it does, and then I have everything sorted by my account segment, or my natural segment, or my object segment. All I really have to do at this stage is just sort through, or sorry, I meant to say scroll through until I find a mistake. It should be very easy to find. And I admittedly purposely created this mistake, but I see, oh, there is a profit and loss right in the middle of this long, long range. That is very much a mistake. So all I would have to do at this stage is double click. Here is the account maintenance window. By the way, this assumes you have access to that window. And all I do now is just correct it. So this is should be a balance sheet item. I corrected it, I click on save, and I'm okay to continue from there. Right? I would have to refresh in order to see the fix, but let's just keep going. So are there any other mistakes? I actually did purposely create one other mistake in there somewhere. Oh man, I hope this isn't a quiz for me. <laughs> okay. I think I, I don't remember doing two mistakes, but um, but here it is. So there's two more accounts in here that are incorrectly set up. I would fix them. I would make them a profit and loss account instead of a balance sheet account, and I would be okay to continue. So this should be something that would take two minutes to fix what could have been a massive mistake otherwise. So so you again, you would double click, you fix it, you save, and you continue from there. So this is a very useful step, very easy to do. So I would definitely suggest every single year you do this, even if you may have done this uh, last year, but I'll still do it again this year because you're, everyone is always creating a few general ledger accounts here and there, and you never know when you made a tiny little mistake. So there we go, that's one very handy little tip. While we're at it, I'm also going to throw out another tip. Um, I'm actually going to go to my setup window for the Gen Ledger module. And one of the things that I like to do here is just check to see which retained earnings account I'm using. One thing is simply make sure it's the right retained earnings account. That's That part is pretty straightforward. But you might have um, changed things. You might have closed off a different GL account uh, earlier on and things might have changed. But, but uh, the other thing that I like to check is I like to drill down to this account see how it says retained earnings. So far, so good. It's definitely the correct account. But what I like, but this is a one tip that's useful for anyone who uses multi-currency, right? So if you are in the US or Canada or any other country, but then let's say that you have some GL accounts that use other currencies like Australian or yen or something else, then there is a feature in GP that, that goes account by account and says this GL account can use Australian dollars. This GL account can use uh, yen or something else, right? So um, although that's great, what, I, what we need to do at this stage is make sure that your retained earnings account has that same setting, okay? So it, it should have access to all the currencies that you actually use. If it doesn't, then when you're moving the uh, balances to, into the retained earnings account, 
anything that is um, a foreign currency, let's say, will not make it, will not be moved over, right? And again, if it's a profit and loss, that should be happening, but uh, without you realizing it, you may have actually restricted that functionality. So when you're looking at your retained earnings account under the account maintenance window, click on the currency button and make sure that everything is checkmarked. It looks like for whatever reason, Euro is not. So I will check mark that, click on save, and you should be okay to go from there. Okay, so that is another one that has caught people by uh, by surprise on occasion. I actually had that exact same issue five years ago. I remember that because that's actually when this particular feature in GP came on. Um, it's a new feature that I'm about to show you in a minute. But that is the one and only time in, in GP that you will actually get a, an unbalanced distribution in there. And people might... Uh, you might have not realized that was possible, but uh, in that one and only situation, it is. But as I'm implying, as I'm implying though, it's not much of an issue nowadays, and I'll show you why in a moment. Okay, so there we go. Let's. Uh... So after this step, I would probably be doing a backup to your company. So in other words, making sure that the data is backed up in case. You don't like the result or something. And then you would print out a trial balance report as well, as well as any net income statements or uh, balance sheets or whatever else you have. Okay. While we're at it, let's be a little extra thorough today. Let's go to the fiscal periods window. Right? And I know I've been there all uh, several times today, but what I'd like to do this time is also create the new year. Right, let's see, um, I'm actually already have the new year. So I'm going to create a new year in my system. I actually have a lot already, but I'm going to show you how easy it is. So 2029, I tab and it starts off very blank, but all I really have to do is confirm um, that the date range is correct for this new year, right? And if you're happy with it, click on calculate and you don't get that error message. And then you would uh, normally have all your periods set up right, right away. So it's actually fairly fairly easy to do. Uh, I, I want everyone to close their eyes just for a moment. <laughs> now that I had that little problem. I think, uh, John, this is normally when you do a joke so that uh, people are distracted and they don't see my little. <laughs> my you, want, you want me to save you? <laughs> yeah. Sabrina, why did the chicken cross the road? Why? To get to the other side. That, uh, was that original? Not your Carlos, best. We need you back. Okay. Fast. No, I'm kidding. I, uh, I got around that issue in a not very clever way, but close enough. <laughs> so um, what I did was I set up the new year. So it's now 2028 or 20 or a, 2020, 2021, whatever it is in your case, um, and we're ready to continue from there. Okay, so once again, we're going to go to the routine section and we're going to click on year end closing. Okay, and this is similar to the year end window for AP and AR, but in this case, we actually have a couple of extra options, right? Uh, so here it's confirming which GL account you're going to be using for retained earnings. We actually looked at that briefly when we were looking at the setup, but it's here again, just to make sure. In fact, you could even change it if you really wanted to, but I, I like to have the setup correct. It's also going through a bit of confirmation of, of on which year you're going to be closing and so on. There's also a couple of options in here. I actually am accustomed to not check marking that them, but really that's more up to you. So um, it says, if you have any unused segments, then you can remove them while you're doing it at the year end, right? So for example, let's say that one of your segments is a department and you actually created a department a while ago, right? So, but you ended up not using it, right? So it was just uh, some funny thought that you had. So you can remove that so that your um, segment setup is a little clean, let's say, and um, it'll do it for you automatically. I don't really like to do that. I like to keep it open because you never know uh, why that was set up. I'd rather go through a manual process of deleting those sort of things as opposed to an automatic. But really that's more of a personal choice. 
and also uh, something about maintaining inactive accounts, right? So it is possible to delete them, but uh, that is one of those things where there's some some conditions to it, right? So you can so you can delete them or get rid of them, let's say. Um, in this case, if they're inactive, so if they've actually been set up as inactive, but also if they have no transaction history or no balance to them, right? So GP will not delete a GL account if it has a lot of history to that, to the, to it. And I think that probably a few people are going to be relieved by that. Otherwise, though, from here uh, you click on the close year button. You click on that, and then it goes through maybe a minute or so, depending on how much transaction history you have, and goes through the year-end process. It closes everything off, it moves the balances over to that retained earnings account that we were talking about before, and it's done. On a rare occasion, if you didn't go through the, process, the steps that I suggested, for example, you didn't check to make sure that, the, uh, that everything is properly set to either balance sheet or profit and loss, um, and later on you realize, whoops, I made a mistake, nowadays there's a really, really useful uh, button. It's called the reverse historical year. So closing in the year is a fairly big thing. The, the process is easy. Maybe five or 10 years ago, people would be doing a lot of backups and be very, very careful about making sure that everything's correct because it was very difficult to correct it if there was a mistake. But as of version GP 2015, this button got introduced, reverse historical year. So if you make a mistake, well, I hope you didn't, but you can just click on reverse historical year and it will just reverse everything out so that you're basically just a, a taken, a, ta you took a step back and you're ready, you're okay to just review everything and make sure everything's okay. So an extremely useful button in my opinion. It takes the pressure off making sure that you are absolutely perfect. Although I hope you are anyway. So, um, so that is the year-end process. Maybe one useful point to make. I have um, sometimes people are closing the year right at the very on the, either the last day of that year or the first day of the next year. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not necessarily required. To the in the opposite extreme, I have also seen people who delay the closing of the year for many, many, many months because they keep saying, oh, well, we might have some adjusting transactions, auditors are going to be coming, who knows what we have to put into the prior year. So we don't want to close the year yet. So that is something that I've heard as well, and that is not an issue. Uh, the reality is it is not an issue, and that's not as of version 2015 or anything. That has always been not an issue. Let's say that the year-end process has been done. There is that journal entry that moves everything to that return it, retained during the account. Well, even if you now post something to the prior year, assuming that was not a mistake, like you actually meant to post something to the prior year because an auditor said you have to or whatever, or maybe for tax purposes, the uh, GP will automatically do a mini year end just for that one transaction. So it will, for balance sheet items, it will move that balance uh, to the next to the new year, which is the current year, and for re for profit and loss accounts, it will transfer the balance over to the retained earnings account, right? So it's almost like you have two year ends for, for that one calendar year, one for all your transactions and all your accounts, and another one for that little uh, adjusting transaction you did later on. And that all, all happens automatically. It's not something that you, that you have to worry about. You can always review it, but it should be perfect. There we go. I think there were a lot of tips in there. I hope some of them helped you out. If the, anyone does have any questions, then you can always uh, reach out to us. Uh, let us know what that question is, and we'll get back to you. But uh, there we go. John, any? That's uh, it. You're all done. Yeah. All right. So if anybody has any questions, please write them in the questions box. Of course, we cannot hear you, so um, we'll come to them in just a couple moments. I'm going to steal back control just so that we can wrap things up. But thanks, Carlos. I hope that that makes uh, your end not as scary for some. All right. 
Cool. So, Sabrina, can you take us out in exciting fashion? Of course. When do I not? <laughs> so, thank you again, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. Um, we do post the recordings up on our social media, so I would recommend that you give us a like and follow so you can stay up to date on our latest trainings as well as the recordings if there was something that you missed. Um, as well, I wanted to point out some of our upcoming training. Uh, as John mentioned, we offer both paid boot camps and these free one hour sessions pretty frequent, frequently. Um, and our last boot camp was a huge success. The person is now joining our next one. Just a really great opportunity to deep dive into a topic and uh, really using the time that we're spending in quarantine productively so we can all uh, increase our GP skills, brush up on new ones. That's all I got. No, I think that's great. Yeah, and I mean, I think, you know, some of you are familiar with our boot camps, but, um, you know, they're meant to be, you know, all day, they're intensive, they give you a lot of knowledge, whereas these webinars are just kind of like a, an overview. In some cases, you know, we target something, uh, you know, very small, in which case it's enough, but um, the boot camps are fantastic, and usually they're a pretty small group, so we cap it to 10 people. Uh, in some cases, especially now, because a lot of uh, people, you know, they're either not working or sometimes working and the groups are smaller than usual so um, you have a good opportunity to have some you know one-on-one -on -one, uh, time potentially with consultants assuming uh, not many people join so yeah I think that's great I really appreciate everybody joining 